So if you're like most of us, the thought of starting the Bible can be really scary, really intimidating, or just sound way too hard. Well, in this video, we are gonna be sharing with you guys our journey when we first got started reading the Bible so that hopefully it gives you some encouragement that you can start too. What's up everybody, this is Ronnie. And Mel. And on this channel, we give you weekly tools and inspiration to help you find God and walk with Him in your daily life. So if that's something you need, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. So if you are new here, welcome. And if you've been tracking with us for a while, you know we just got finished with our first teaching series called Bible for Beginners. If you happen to miss those teachings, we went through everything from how to read the Bible to what version to get, so if you want to watch it for yourself, that'll be linked down in the description below. We also have a free gift for you at the end of this video that will help you as you dive into the Bible, so make sure you don't miss it. But on this channel, we actually wanted to give you more than just step-by-step -step instructions. So we actually wanted to let you know what it looked like for us so you can realize that if we can do it, anyone can. So hopefully our stories give you guys some courage and some motivation, so let's dive right in. All right, so when you first started reading the Bible, Tell us, like, what did it look like? How did you do it? Well, when I first got started, um, I had a friend give me a Bible and he told me to actually start in the New Testament. And I didn't even know what that was at the time. He said, it's in the back. I said, why are we starting in the back? And he said, I don't know. That's what the pastor said. So I did what the pastor said. I started in the New Testament, Book of Matthew. I started with a New Living Translation, so an NLT. And I just began to, began to read from Matthew to Revelation to Matthew to Revelation. I just read it over and over again. The funny thing is, is growing up, like I hated reading. Mm -hmm. I never even read any books growing up. I didn't even read motocross magazines. I would only look at the pictures and maybe read the captions. Like I didn't, I was never a reader. I hated reading. And even to this day, like, you know, like I can't spell anything. <laughs> so reading, comprehension, spelling are, are like my weak points for sure even to this day, but somehow it's crazy because the Bible actually isn't just one book, it's six, six different books. I was able to get through, I mean, I started with the New Testament, obviously, but I was able to get through all 66 of those books over time, mm -hmm. which is crazy to me because I've never, I didn't even read books in school and then I'm able to sit down and take this massive book and go through 66 different books. So I thought that to me was evidence that God was actually helping me read this because yeah. I didn't have that growing up like it just wasn't a strong point that I had so anyway went through like I said from Matthew to Revelation Matthew to Revelation and then I did like the proverb one proverbs a day for 30 days because there's 30 of them so I did that uh, I went through some of the Psalms and I, I kind of wrestled through the Psalms and then I was like well I'm gonna go back to the Old Testament and start in Genesis and try to just make it through and uh you know, Jenna, there's there's some cool books in there, but then there's some other books that were tougher. So I, I like, you know, when I got to some of those tougher books, I started to bog down and struggle a little bit. And then I would find myself going back to the New Testament just because I was looking for stuff that kind of yeah. like I was able to relate to like immediately. But I usually had, you know, an hour, some days maybe less if someone popped up, maybe some days more. But I, I always kind of had about an hour in the morning before I would go out back and then I would just start my day. When I first started reading, I think that God was speaking to me so much through the Bible that I was excited to keep on reading. Like mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted to know more of the story. So I was kind of like, it was, it was almost like fun because it was all new. Like I didn't know any of the stories. So when then I was like reading all these stories, I was like, kind of like, whoa, whoa, I didn't know that, you know? Yeah, so that's kind of how I began, just setting a time in the morning, staying consistent, making sure that I did it every day and starting in one place, picking up the next day, and moving on right through New Testament, and then jump up back and work my way through the Old Testament. Yeah, and because I know for me, so when I got saved, I got saved basically by reading the Bible. I understood, wow, I didn't know that God was this way, and so I knew that the Bible was important because that was where I first encountered Him in the beginning. And so I remember I just got radically saved, and I bought myself this like one year Bible. Mm. But what it did was every single day you'd get a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament, part of the Psalms and part of the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. I kind of found it really hard though. And I, I, I think that that's a really hard way to read it because you're reading like 
four different kinda, stories. I've heard of people doing that though. Read two chapters of the new, two of the old, mm -hmm. read a psalm and a proverb. I've heard people doing it. I've never really tried that way, but. I think it would be easier if you understand the storyline already mm -hmm. to be able to break it up. But when you're a brand new believer to not like understand anything that's going on and having to figure out what's going on here and then what's going on here. And mm -hmm. it's, it, I thought it, I actually found it kind of hard. So really for that first year, I was just trying to plow through it. And mm -hmm. it was really just hard. I didn't really understand a lot of it, but I just kept saying yes every day. But I remember when I got to the end of it, I read the book of Revelation. And it's, it's actually about stuff that's still yet to come. And I didn't even realize that God has this whole storyline and there's still part that hasn't happened. And I'm actually a part of it. And I remember the Bible just I just got even hungrier to know it because I understood there was stuff still ahead of me. And I remember going to a conference right at that time and the pastor was talking about how he always would, he would read the New Testament and he would read 10 chapters a day and he would get through the whole New Testament in a month and he would mm. do that month after month. And so I just remember, I was like, if this guy can do 10 chapters like a day, I can try it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember I was always like behind. And so every single month I would miss a few days here and there, or not read 10 chapters, but I just would end up reading the gospels over mm. and over. I only made I like it the through the gospels. Yeah, I only made it to the, I never made it past the gospels because I was so behind. So for a year, every single month, I just read, read gospels. gospels. And then again, I would read the gospels and something about just immersing yourself in the life of Jesus. I came out of that season and I knew him. Yeah, like, that's a good place to... And so for me, reading the gospels over and over again was so key to my life in God because I, I got really connected to him, you know, the person, mm -hmm. the man Jesus that all the rest of the Bible is pointing to anyway. And so, you know, from that, I found a better one-year Bible that didn't break it up, and it was just the storyline chronologically from the beginning to mm -hmm. the end. Is that the one you still use today? It's the one I still yeah. use today. I love, I love reading mm -hmm. the whole story you... from beginning to the end. And so, I would do that, and I'd read a psalm every morning. I love just reading the psalm just to connect my heart before I read the other things. And so, you know, that's kind of what it looked like in the beginning days. It, didn't click for you know years and I tried to do Bible plans and I didn't even make it through them but God mm -hmm. still used it because mm -hmm. anytime that you read the word it's gonna do something in your heart even if you don't feel like it is it's doing something in your heart so yeah so that was kind of my journey when I first started so what keeps you motivated to just stay with it mm -hmm. uh, you know day after day month after month year after year mm -hmm. and... I think what motivates me it's really just connecting with him, you know, because it's when you read the Bible, it's like John 1 says he is the word of God that was made flesh. So when you come to the Bible, it's like you're coming to Jesus. And when you read that word, you're connecting with him and you're hearing him. And so I can tell like when I'm not reading the word, when I'm not connected to Jesus, like I can tell too. <laughs> well, that's my point is like, the further I stray from the word, the further I actually am straying from Jesus and the more he's not filling my life because mm -hmm. I'm being filled with other things and not filled with him. And yeah, you can tell. And that's, that's just the known thing. I think any believer has probably experienced that. Mm -hmm. When you're in the word consistently a lot, you have a tendency to just be overflowing with the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness so on and so forth. You get out of the word and you just filled up with the world and you, you like, I find myself going, I feel like, man, I feel like my old person getting edgy all the time, not as friendly as I normally am. Like mm -hmm. it's just a real testimony of the truth of whatever you feed on mm -hmm. is what's gonna dominate your life. For if sure. you feed the flesh, the flesh will dominate. If you feed the spirit, the spirit will dominate. It is, I've seen that. I mean, and that's, Another point too is when I'm not in the word and I'm not connected to Jesus, one, it's like, man, I like miss him. Like I'm just miss that connection and that mm -hmm. nearness to him. And so I want to obviously get in the word more so that I can have that. But I mean, it's the concept of two becoming one. Like in a marriage, the more I hang out with Ronnie, 
the more I'm going to like what Ronnie likes. Like the more I'm going to kind of, like the more you're with someone, the more you sort of become like them. So like, you want to go, go to the motocross track this no. week? <laughs> you can go ride? Yeah, have fun with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, Let's go ride. But I mean, but I go ride to those things because you care about those things. And so, I love those things. Exactly. <laughs> and so it's, it's like any relationship. The more that you spend time with someone, the more you begin to like and enjoy and become like that person. I mean, and it can be in the wrong thing. That's why kids get influenced by bad friends. It's the same thing. So I think that's a huge motivation for why to go to the Word of God. And it's, it's to meet with Him and then to overflow in your everyday life with His Spirit and with His love. Because the Bible says, this is the eternal life that you may know Him. Mm -hmm. So knowing Him, it really is the supreme motivation, I think, to read the Word, to connect mm -hmm. with Him. I think anybody who loves Jesus probably would use that as a, mm -hmm. answer that question that way. But I think even for me, just wanting to know Jesus, wanting to connect with Him, understand what He taught, understanding even the, the whole entire gospel, I think for me, just big picture. Like, because you can just study the New Testament, and, and if you hang out there for a long time, there's a whole bigger storyline that mm -hmm. you can miss out on if you don't get into the Old Testament and understand. And I think that just even recently has really stirred me up to like really study the Old Testament and really understand the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Like what is the whole plan of God? And how do I fit into this storyline? Not just my personal salvation and me and Jesus have this personal relationship, but like what is, what is God really doing? Mm -hmm. and what's, this, what's going on with Israel and this chosen people? and it's gonna happen at a second coming. I think that has really motivated me in the last few years, I would say, just to really study the scriptures and get understanding of the entire biblical storyline. And I think a lot of Christians get caught, you know, they kind of, I don't want to ever take anything away from the cross, but they kind of like get stuck at the cross. It's mm -hmm. like, it's a personal salvation between me and Jesus. When I die, I'm going to heaven. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna to try to do more good than bad. And that's really it. And but there's there's way more. Mm -hmm. And and unless we dive back into the old and understand what all the prophets said and understand the promises he made to Abraham and Mosaic Covenant, there's just oh, there's so much to unpack and there's so many layers of it and there's this and like it's like a lifetime journey of like searching this man out and searching out his word and his story and his plan and trying to navigate through it. And even some of the the, the prophets, I mean there's people say, well, it could mean this, it could mean that. And then you kind of have to look at everything and try to piece it all together and go, well, which one is it? Which one does it seem like it would be the most because there's more leaning this, you know what I mean? And that, that takes time. Yeah. Like you really can't get all of this in a year, two, three, four. Like it seriously is a lifetime journey for all of my days here on earth. I will spend trying to wrap my head around who this God is and why he chose to do things the way he chose to do it. Right, it's not like you can just no. read it once and be like, check, yeah. read that book. Yeah, because you know? it seems like I'll, even even books that you're familiar with, like the Gospels or the letters of Paul, like you've read those things over and over again, but you read them one day and you'll be like, I've never saw that verse before. You're like, mm -hmm. how did, like you're like tripping, like going, how did, like, how did I miss it? Like I haven't read this book and all of a sudden that verse just hits you that one day and it's almost like, how did I never see that before? And you've been through, you've been a believer for 10 years. Well, and it says his word is living and yeah. it's active. And so it can speak to us differently in one season than it did in another. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is, it's just important to give yourself to understanding of all of God's story. And I mean, that's a great motivation. Yeah, and, and more motivation is being prepared. Mm -hmm. Like where are we, where's the story headed? Mm -hmm. Like what's gonna happen? Like what, what, what is the end time storyline so that when it all goes down, I'm not sitting in the dark, confused and like going, whoa, what happened? Well, I don't get this. Why? This doesn't look like God. This looks like, but if you actually take the time to, to study those chapters and get some understanding on how it's going to go down, you're not going to be offended and off in the corner, scared or full of fear or whatever. You're actually going to go, oh, I'm actually in agreement with God's doing because I already search this out and study it and actually know what's going to happen next and you're going to be able to instruct people in those days so i think that's another motivation i know for even for us mm -hmm. is like we want to make sure that 
you know, if we're here, we're prepared. Mm -hmm. And if we're not, we're going to take everything that we're learning, why we're here, and then give that to the next generation mm -hmm. so that they're not in the dark. Well, and it's not only just like a good motivation, like it's actually a command. Mm, like he commands you to watch and pray, yeah. to know the seasons. Like, so it's actually... No, he he's, says, he's learn the parable you. of the fig tree. And yeah. the parable of the fig tree is understanding the signs and the seasons of the coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to reading the Bible, what has been the hardest thing for you? Hmm. I mean, I would probably say I don't understand every single thing that I read, mm -hmm. like all the time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll, I need to ask people like, hey, what does that mean? Do you, do you know what that chapter is talking about? Or you know what that verse means? Or like, so I think that's, that's probably been a tougher thing to me is, is not understanding everything. Um, which I think is okay. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's a whole ton that you do understand right off the bat. And I think that's important. What you are understanding at the very moment, I think that's what God's speaking. And what you don't maybe understand at this time, it, it's okay. I feel like the, you can ask somebody, you can read a commentary, you can, there's so much resources out there to search things out on things that, that you don't understand. So I would say that's probably even harder for me is actually to take the time to search it out yeah. because it's easy to go, I don't understand that, I'm gonna move on. Mm -hmm. Rather than, I don't understand that, let me actually take the time to look a little bit deeper to find out what it really means. Because I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not big on study. I'm big on like gym, like ride, like, mo like move the body, go outside, cut the grass, like sit down and study is not a strong point for me, but somehow by the grace of God, I've been able to do it. Mm -hmm. But when I find myself in the place of like, okay, I don't understand this, to actually take the time to search it out, which I do, but not all the time. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll go, ah, whatever, I'm gonna read something, keep going. So that could be a- Or you just ask your wife. Yeah, I do. I ask her all the time. No, that's what's great about being around people who know the Bible better than you. You just hey, what does this mean? Like, well, and I always do that. We've had some very intense debates. Yeah, before. we don't always agree on everything. I don't think it means this, she means that. Hey, that's, that's all I good. I always end up being right, but. She thinks she's right all the time. But no, seriously, you can ask people, you can read, you can, there's Bible Project, you can see what they have to say about it. You can look up, there's just a million ways to get information, but to take the time to go get it mm -hmm. is, a struggle for me sometimes. Yeah. And I think some of the hardest things for me has been, so he doesn't deal with this at all, but there are some people like me that deal with this a lot, but I can really fall into what's called like legalism. Meaning if I miss a day where I don't pray a certain number of hours or, you know, I don't read my Bible like I should, I'll feel condemned and I'll feel like I have to go and like prove to God that I love him, you know, or I'm just sitting back in shame. Mm. And so I think even when it comes to reading the Bible, to me, it, it sometimes can be this point of, I wanna check off all the boxes, Lord, to like make you love me. Or if I'm not doing it perfect, it's almost like I feel so obligated that I have to do it and I have to do it a certain way that it just, it feels like religion. It mm. just doesn't even become a relationship with him anymore. And so I can fall into that trap. And I know, you know, there's probably lots of people out there that can. And so I think some of my biggest struggles is staying consistent without either mm -hmm. feeling the need to please him or the need to like put myself in this penalty box where I have to do things for the Lord to let me. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think that's why I do well with Bible plans. Mm -hmm. So Bible plans really help me because I can read a little bit per day and it keeps me on track. Bible plans really do help me. So well, that's good. All right. So what's it look like now and like what's changed from the past? Mm -hmm. I mean, now it actually looks a lot different than it did for me in different seasons because for me, ever since I got saved, I was always in some, you know, internship at a church or I was, you know, a missionary. And so I had hours and hours that I was able just to sit before the Lord, read the Bible. Like, I mean, there were days where that's all I did. Mm -hmm. And my season looks completely different now. You know, I'm a wife, we have our ministry, we have our puppy who takes a lot of time. <laughs> And it's just my, and I have a home now, like life just looks a lot different in this mm -hmm. season. So 
I think one thing I don't want to do in the season is compare it to my last one and be like, my this season isn't as amazing as that one because I'm not in the Bible as much. So my season now, it's sort of, I mean, we spend time with the Lord in the morning, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's at the prayer room near our house or just here in our home. You know, we have an office upstairs that we like to spend time with the Lord in and it might only be an hour or two. It might not be all day. Actually, it never gets to really be all day like it used to, but the Lord still values that and it still matters to the Lord. And so it does look a little bit different. I still do Bible plans today. I, I still just love the whole one year Bible plan. I mean, that's kind of, whether it's, it, my Bible plans are either read it in one year or read the New Testament over and over, even if I just get through the Gospels over and over. But they just really help me. So I still, I still use those. I use different translations though. Um, I either do the New King James, the ESV, the English Standard Version, or if I'm studying, I'll use the NASB because that's a better study Bible. So, I mean, it just looks different now. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so what's different for me, I mean, I'm still a morning person. Mm -hmm. I think I'll always be a morning person. I've been able to increase my time now that I'm not competing, I'm not traveling as much. So and I've been able, switched. Yeah, I've been able. My time went down, his time went up. And I never had a prayer room as far as like an actual a place of corporate prayer. There's a prayer room up the street here in Kansas City. It's 24 seven, it's corporate. I've never had that before. But now that I have that, there's, there's days I might go down there and you know, spend the first 20, 30 minutes just worshiping or just maybe praying in the spirit before I even sit down and open up my Bible. So I think things have just changed being, have, being having access to that. I think my time is definitely increased. It all depends. Like there was a season, like when we first moved here, we were consistently in the prayer room for three to four hours every day, sometimes even longer. Mm -hmm. So I still love the NLT. I have a new King James now, but I still like the NLT because I like things simple. Mm -hmm. I like simple. Don't, if I can't understand it, I'm like, what good is it? So I still like the NLT. So I have an NLT and a new King James, but I still like the the go and even open up my Bible app and read other translations. Cause there might be a translation that says it one simple phrase easier for me to understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm open, to, like, I like looking at the other translations, but I think the biggest change for me would just be giving myself more time in the word in prayer and in worship. And I think like, I'm not competing now. I'm not traveling as much. I live in a a, play, a city that has a, a prayer room we can go to. We have our own prayer room here at the house, which, a lot of times we'll just stay home and spend time at upstairs in, in our own personal time. Mm -hmm. So I think that'd be the biggest, biggest thing for me is just sitting long, exercising the muscle, which is, which is something that I need to do. Like, like I said, I'm a get up and get busy person. So it's very easy for me to wake up it's not like I wake up and I'm motivated. Oh man, let's just go pray and get in the word. No, my brain normally wants to go get on my phone and start thinking about the to-do list and go eat breakfast and do all this other stuff. So I have to work the muscle to wrestle. Go, okay, like let's go get in the prayer room. Let's mm -hmm. go up in the office. Let's mm -hmm. open our word. Let's talk to God. Like that's something I've been consistent at and been able to do it for years. But still, like if I want to do it and do it for long hours, that's something I, you have to work at. Like it don't, it's not like it's just, there like it's something you have to fight for like and, and i mean i've been in the faith for 10 years and we talked about that earlier you can easily go to the to-do list you can easily go to all the other stuff rather than take the time to sit with the lord so just working the muscle to keep keep hanging out with jesus mm -hmm. so if there's one little piece of advice that you could give people who are just starting out what would it be i would men just get started that's mm -hmm. it. Like whatever you can give, give. Like if you got 15 minutes, give the Lord 15 minutes. You can do 30, do 30. And like whatever you can get, get in the word. If it's, you know, whether it's I have, I can, I'm going to read a chapter a day or I'm going to read a book a day or whatever, just go after it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I think anything is better than nothing. The whole point is to, and to be consistent, do it day after day. And if you miss a day, hey, get back out there the next day. Like, it's not like, you know, you've got to condemn yourself and think Jesus don't love you no more because you didn't read your Bible today. Like, 
yeah, we want to stay into it. We want to give time to the Lord. But I think everyone misses a day here and there. There's days you will wake up and then a bomb goes off and everything goes wrong in the house. Like the dog pees on the bed. <laughs> And now our whole morning's been messed up. And next thing you know, we're like, okay, it's 10 now. We got to go start our day. And we didn't sit with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That happens. Mm -hmm. I'm sure kids, people have kids. Something happens with the kids. Stuff happens. But then it's like, try to find time at night then. Like, if you didn't get it in the morning, open up your Bible that night and sit with the Lord. Or like, you're driving in the car. Put on a message. That's one thing that I like to do is I don't just read the Bible in the morning, shut my Bible, and then go, okay. I'm just going to forget about Jesus and go do my day for the day. No, like, like, I still talk to the Lord during the day. If I'm mowing the grass or working on my bike or at the gym, I'm listening to messages. I'm like, I, the Word gets in me one way or another, mm -hmm. like, whether I'm reading it or hearing someone preach about it. And then me and you, like, we, at night, like, we don't watch TV. We're not TV people. We watch stuff that we put on David Pawson unlocking the Bible and listen to this man teach the scriptures. We watch YouTube channels with people teaching about the end times. Like we constantly take other parts of the day and use it to fill ourselves up. So, well, and I think that that is just a big point is that it doesn't have to like look a certain mm -hmm. perfect way. Like the way that you do it might look different mm -hmm. than the way one of us does it. I mean, mm -hmm. we do it differently, you mm -hmm. know? And so I think you just have to figure out what works for you and the mm -hmm. Lord cares about your reach. All right, well, that's it for today, you guys. And just remember, everybody's journey in the Bible is gonna look different. God has a unique story and a unique season with you and your life, so just let him lead you on this journey. And he wants to connect with you through his words, so just find out what that looks like for you. And if you're new to this journey, we actually have a Bible for Beginner's Guide we wanna send to you. All you have to do is click the link below in the description and we'll send it to you for free. So if you enjoyed this video and if you liked this little style that we did here with sitting down and just chatting through some stuff, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you think it might help someone you know, make sure to share it because you never know the difference that you can make in someone else's life. So we want to hear from you guys. So be sure to comment below and let us know what is the one thing that you heard today that was an encouragement to you. So we hope this helps you on your journey to find God and walk with him and we will see you next time.